Cyberwork is celebrating its next major milestone. As of July 2020, Cyberwork has had over a quarter of a million listeners. We're so grateful to all of you that have watched the videos on our YouTube page, commented on live release feeds, left ratings and reviews on your favorite podcast platform, redeemed bonus offers, or just listened in the comfort of your own home. Thank you to all of you. Because our listenership is growing so quickly and because Cyberwork has big plans for the second half of 2020 and beyond, we want to make sure that we're giving you what you want to hear. That's right, we wanna hear specifically from you. So please go to www.infosecinstitute.com slash survey. That's www and the numeral two, www.infosecinstitute.com slash survey. The survey is just a few questions and it won't take you that long, but it will really help us to know where you are in your cybersecurity career and what topics and types of information you enjoy hearing on this podcast. Again, that's www dot infosecinstitute.com slash survey. Uh, please respond today and you could be entered to win a $100 Amazon gift card. That's www.infosecinstitute.com slash survey. Thanks once again for listening and now on with the show. All right, welcome back to a special bonus video episode of Cyberwork. Uh, my guest today is Amber Schroeder of Paraben, and if you haven't heard her full episode in which she talks about the state of computer forensics, uh, both as a practice and as a career, I highly, highly encourage you to check that out as well, either on the podcast or on the YouTube channel. Uh, so now we're going to do something a little different and more interactive. So um, Amber is going to show us uh, how she is uh, currently investigating Discord, uh, so to speak. Um, I originally thought that there was a Paraben Discord channel over there where people would collaborate and talk about uh, computer forensics practices and stuff, but it's even more interesting than that. Uh, Amber, you want to take it from there? Yeah, there is. Just so you know, there is a DFIR uh, Discord channel. It's not run by Paraben, but there is one out there that people can go in and join. Okay. I think he has like 30,000 plus users in it too. It's like huge. Oh, okay. do, you, do people from Paraben sort of take part in that over there? We do. There are a lot of listservs and groups um, and things that you can be part of. Uh, Cyber Social Hub is one of them, which is a whole, it's like a social media platform you can kind of participate in. And we try to, to nibble into all of them. Okay. Discord is probably the hardest one for me to go back and get into again because you have to catch up on so much. Right. But it's it's, 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 it's kind of happen. going 24 hours, right? It is. Yeah. It's, it's why it was one of those things I said, wow, if we're talking that much in it, then imagine how much normal people are that we want to investigate. So let's make a tool for it. So that's okay. it. So yeah, let's, um, let's start by sort of explaining discord to those of us who are, you know, my age or are just completely, you know, tech, uh, tech unfamiliar or whatever. What, what does, what is discord? What does it do? So Discord was primarily made for uh, gamers. So right. they would get in and be able to uh, chat while they're gaming and share things and become kind of their own little social community. Okay. There's a lot of different things in gaming platforms that uh, they'll use. Uh, so you could use Discord. You could be in Twitch and watch other streamers, that kind of thing. But I picked Discord because Discord in particular is very popular about probably middle school, junior high through high school. That okay. you get a lot more in Discord. And so when you think about doing uh, potential help with investigations, especially with child exploitation, very, very popular. So something hmm. that needed to be looked at that was uh, kind of being ignored. So yeah. that's why we spent the time to look at it. Um, I use my kids as examples with their consent. I want to say that because okay. some people really get yeah. on me because I'm one of those harpy moms. Right. I'm not. <laughs> um, I Everybody am an, knows what's going on here. Yeah. Yes. I am an informed mom that also sits and talks to my kids uh, because right. I think that's really important. Otherwise, they potentially are going to make bad digital decisions, right. which will affect the rest of their life. So there you okay, go. Okay. So, so I, I guess, can we sort of talk before we, before we open it up? Did you sort of build a specific like tool to sort of yeah. examine Discord? Is that what we're talking about here? So yeah, what we did is when we released the 2.6 version of the E3 platform, we added okay. Discord capabilities in it for uh. our universal customers. So okay. they had the ability to then query up because Discord is cloud-based. Um, so they can go up to the cloud and actually query down the accounts associated with their person they're investigating, which is what we're going to do. Okay. All right. So uh, if you can share your screen here, let's, uh, let's see what we can do. So, all right. So 
uh, you now should be seeing my primary screen, which is the E3 interface. Yes. And you should see an acquire device and an add evidence option. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what the E3 platform does is it allows you to take any type of evidence and put it into a single interface so that you can then do analytics with it. Because at the end of the day, it's still going to have analytics with it. Right. The first thing we have to do is capture it though. So um, if I were doing a mobile, I would acquire my device. If I were doing a computer or something else, I would add evidence through traditional sources. Um, this is where I would do Xboxes. We mentioned that in a conversation we had before. Um, if I were doing a Windows system, uh, I would add there, all of that. So I'm actually going to exit out of that because I'm gonna focus on this little guy right here, which is cloud. Cloud's probably the, the largest growing segment in digital forensics as far as your tools go, because uh, so much of our data, especially with the change in the pandemic, um, is going cloud-based. So we had to make creative methods for you to still be able to capture that information. So it's going to prompt me up front to name a case. So I'm just going to do case about Discord, make it simple. Mm -hmm. It's going to de decide where to save it. All of our cases are actually stored in a Firebird format, which allows you to have a large database. So uh, Discord in particular, a lot of different data sets, obviously a huge amount of information. Sure. Our cloud wizard then lets you go through and pick which type of cloud you want to deal with. Uh, so we can do anything from Alexa through iCloud, but we're going to focus on Discord. Okay. Um, it is kind of fun, though, for those that are just exploring digital forensics, we actually have a free version of the E3 platform, and it will let you do your Facebook account out of the cloud. Following oh, similar yeah. steps. So, Interesting. yeah, it's kind of fun. It's a good way to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you type in the account credentials. Um, this is where you have that big question where people go, what about legal, uh, yada, yada, yada. Right. So um, obviously part of forensics is now consent. So you want to make sure you have consent for this and they've provided this for you, which uh, my teenager who is still a minor has still provided this for me. Um, he's provided both the email address and, the, and his password. I'm going to choose to authenticate that. As it authenticates, that's the step. It's actually going out to the Discord servers and it is checking with the cloud saying, yep, I got something good. Cool. Now here's the caveat. Our next version, we've actually found the ability to recover these credentials off of their machines. So it gets to be a little more forensic-y um, as far as if the person isn't there to provide consent, different things like that, where I could still do it. Discord has an interesting security uh, authentication associated with it. So in order for me to do Discord without triggering a two-factor authentication, I have to do it on the same IP range or the same IP address that the original account was authenticated on. Okay. So that is a caveat that you do it in the field. Um, it does not take long though. So I'm going to hit continue. This is where we establish things like our scope of our investigation. So if I had a specific date range that I was limited to legally, I could do that. Um, I can limit what section in Discord, and we see we have common sections. Obviously, we want the person's friend. That's who they're talking to on Discord. Um, messages and calls that they might have had, any public channels that they had started. I can do other public channels that they are members of, and I can select that. And then all I do is that. I hit import, and then it's going up to the cloud, to the Discord servers. It's capturing all that information, and it's bringing it down into my case. And um, I picked this child over my other child because he spends less time on Discord. So okay. <laughs> his data is much smaller. Am I, should than I, 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 I'm just seeing sort of a static page here. Are there? Oh, are, do you have like two pages on. going? or? I do. Hang on. There you go. This is when we have the joy of uh, ah, Zoom. There we go. Oh yeah, here it is, cool. So it's gone through and collected all the information from the sections associated with Discord. And we hit finish because that screen went away. Hang on, we'll go back and share the other one. Yep. This is one of my Zoom skills. I never thought I'd have to have Zoom skills. <laughs> it's a Zoom symphony in here, We're conducting. It is. And that's where I now have a cloud import of it. Oh yeah, okay. And I get to see all of his associated data. So here are his friends that he has on it, calls he might've done on Discord and 
is direct messages, which tells you that my kids actually trust me because we yeah. can um, look at some of the information that goes back and forth. Um, he's asked some of these people to a birthday party. Uh, this person hates Pac-Man. So I might hate that person because I love Pac-Man. That's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah. That someone hates Pac-Man. I, it's wrong. I need to lay down with a cold compress on my head. <laughs> <laughs> I still have my Atari with Pac-Man on it. It's that big of a deal. I like Pac-Man that much. So yeah, absolutely. I'm a, so I'm I have a- all this information, which is great. And then I can kind of go through and pick and choose. And of course I also have avatars. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Might get we'll we'll scroll a little bit just because everyone's avatar is a little funky. Sure. So it can be a little bit not safe for work, things like that. Not safe yeah. to have your mom look at. Consider us probably, noted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're yeah. looking at it's, this. It's within kid. the range of what I expect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're looking at this kid, not the other kid, because I looked at his and I was like, oh, I can't show that. So. All right. All right. He's older. <laughs> so. Um. All of this becomes part of my investigation. At that point, that's when I can choose. Hey, do I want to go through and do other analytics, which is where we get a lot of the forensic side of it. Hang on. We're going to have to adjust my screen sharing again. Nope. I, I, this time it's showing oh, up for some reason. This time the, it's showing the, up. Okay. The pop-up box is in there. Yep. Fantastic. This is when those analytic choices and where it becomes valuable to learn how to operate tools. Cause this is where, you know, if you were driving a new car, it's, these are where the windshield wipers are. This is where the brights are so on and so forth. This is kind of what you learn when you do an operational level certification. So uh, sorting data, that's us being able to carve the data out of other sources, breaking it down by header, all that information happens, calculating your hash codes, choosing what hash code you wanna use. Is it SHA-256, is it SHA-1, MV5, so on and so forth, exporting graphics, Indexing keywords, that's a big thing in digital forensics. Oh, yeah. um, we all index our data because then we're going to get through all of the uh, separate streams and the metadata with it. Um, one of the things that's unique inside of Paraben is we're actually big on OCRing data as well because mm. we've become a very visual world right. that um, I notice as that Generation Z, uh, they transfer a lot of data in images. And mm-hmm. it's, it's speaking much more than just the image itself. So we're, we're, we're basically making text versions of memes and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nice. But that makes a huge difference when you're trying to figure out what they're saying. So mm-hmm. um, especially with phones, we actually do that in a couple different languages. You can scan for basic malware, and then I can do recursive searches if this was a full file system. In this case, I'm working with cloud data, so I wouldn't do recursive data analytics. Same with um, if I want to do data streams with it. I don't have any of the CAP files or Olay streams. Um, and this one here is a third party one that allows me to scan the content. We won't do it because we know it's in his Discord uh, based on categories that we want to flag. So illicit content, weapons, guns, drugs, um, gambling, money, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I just, for safe for work, we would skip that. Then we start these processes going in the background we have a multi-threaded environment and it starts processing as it processes that then I can go through and hit my analytics and decide to do some of my searches that can come up so I can do Boolean so on and so forth. And that's how I would go through and start breaking down discord. This is the normal life of a digital forensic person is kind of going through these steps in the process. So what are some of the like keywords you might want to look at in this example? And this one, I would want to go based on who he's talking to. And if I knew my other suspect in this case, so if I said, hey, I want to talk to um, Cole, because that was one of the people that he had in his list, then I want to look in context of that, him and someone else. That's where I could put them all in there. I'm not going to put his username in there, but I could do Cole and I don't know, we'll say Amber and... Chris. And then anything that would come up within that existence would then match up for me. If I knew there were multiple languages, I could load up different codecs based on those languages. And then depending, I would be able to search within those specific areas too. So if I only wanted to search for when that occurred in an image, because I OCR'd, I could do that as well. Okay. Okay. So obviously we will not come up in his discord. But I know it seems like, (laughs) yeah, 
We hope not. Yeah, that would be the sort um, of a horror movie. Yeah. So our processes have all finished. Now I have everything sorted. And this is something that's unique to us in sorting. It just breaks it into categories on how people's brains actually work. This is where that dyslexic side of me, um, I still act, to act as our primary architect for our tools because I like to keep my hands still active in the field. Right. And in doing so, and I'm a little afraid to hit the graphics, we'll see. Um, oh good, the first screen was fairly clean. So <laughs> you never know, it's a teenage boy. Nope. So Fair enough. Um, I like to make sure it makes sense to real people. Um, because computer forensics isn't something that everyone stumbles into in their first career. It might be their second career. Yeah. And so it needs to make sense to everyone in that process. So documents make sense, you know, all these categories, email, chat, graphics in this case, uh, so on and so forth. All of those categories actually make sense to real people. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah. then I can go through and do my analytics of it again. We will limit how much data we actually want to go into. Uh, the only caveats you get when you work with Discord is there is a lot of, there's a lot of noise that happens. Yeah, yeah I was wondering about stuff. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how um, do you sort of just start to see, how, how do you start sort of like pulling threads out of that and pulling clues out of that and so forth? Well, and that's when you start really going, who are the two people involved? Uh, trying to put together someone's entire life that they spend on Discord can be extremely difficult. Um, it is a lot of reading where you're just like, okay, let me pay attention to it. In this case, it's what is his primary purpose on there? Um, this son actually does not play games uh, because he was, he was actually an addict. He was a screen addict. And so um, we are very limited on what we allow him to do, but this is how he stays in communication with his friends. This is right. their platform. But um, so I know they're not going to be talking about games. So I would go back and then I would start looking and I'm trying to be cognizant of his information, of course. Um, and I probably didn't want to pick that one. I'm like, here we go. <laughs> Again, he's a teenage boy. Uh, no judgment, believe me. Yeah, okay. I pray but, to God that oh. Paraben never finds any of my old chat logs. All right. You know, it's, it has given my kids a different uh, perspective on life because yeah. they understand their data so much more than sure. they used to before. So um, this one, it's a bra moment, so on and so forth uh, with proxy. So it's not a lot of communication, but you can see some of the others much more. This one, there's 729. Yeah. I have to kind of go through, get a feel for it, and then start breaking it down with a search engine. That's what okay. I would do as my steps. Okay. So, yeah, again, I can't win with which ones I pick. Yeah. I, you know, I, I feel like we're, uh, uh, you know, our, 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 our viewership is not going to be uh, too freaked Attended. out. <laughs> I try. Here. I try people. I We're try. all here together. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is, this is a really, um, it's not only good, not only good just to show this specific thing that you can do with, you know, discord, but it, it also kind of helps us to get a visual feel for like what computer forensics is, you know, whether it's on this sort of novel new you know, platform or just in general, like you're giving me a good sense of like, you're looking at images, you're looking at texts, you're looking at the, you know, the, the keywords and the things that sort of, uh, you know, cross cut and you're, and like you say, you're building a narrative, you're building a story and you really need to be able to communicate what you've seen and why these disparate threads that you've seen turn into this particular story for your court case. or right. whatever. And hopefully you have multiple pieces where one is going to lead to another. So if I went from looking at his discord to saying, okay, it looks like they're taking it online or they're, you know, talking to each other in Instagram as well, then I know I'm going to have to add that additional piece of evidence in it. Right. And that's kind of the fun part of digital forensics that I think is different than security because security is, I'm very focused. Okay. Let me look at where I am with router configuration, with my firewall configurations, things like that. There's still different pieces, but this one I'm trying to see, I'm trying to actually see a path lead me mm -hmm. somewhere and hopefully to innocence or guilt, depending what it is. Yeah. Are there, are there ever problems where you want to sort of be able to sort of seize a Discord account or things like that and you, you, you don't have access to it or you can't get consent or things like that? Is that an issue? Um, 
that does that would happen um, with uh, some of the new tech and we found with the credentials and many of us already know that in the infosec world where of course you're leaving spare keys uh, all over the place every time you check something you're leaving a key behind um, that where we can recover those types of spare keys and do it without having uh, the direct consent associated with it you are in a legal gray area so when it comes to querying the cloud, there has not been a large percentage of legal precedent that says it goes one way or another. And so the default method is definitely to go with consent. If I were looking at your computer and it was under my original scope or I'm in a corporation and I already own it because it's my machine, that's when it gets a little different. Okay. Uh, is there any other uh, aspects of the Discord Analysis here Discord, that we can look at? Discord's actually pretty pretty easy. I think it gives people kind of a little bit of uh, an example of getting into it. And like I mentioned, um, with their free option, let's see if it comes up. Again, we're testing my capabilities with, with Zoom. Um, that they can go through and in the free version, you can manually type in your Facebook credentials. Of course, my son doesn't have that because he's not that old as he has put it. Mm -hmm. So I could put my Facebook credentials in there. Um, not a big shock with everyone having that. I won't type my password in. And mm -hmm. then I can download everything associated with my Facebook. One of the things that I like as well, as we've changed worlds, digital evidence has changed as well uh, with compliance. So mm -hmm. a lot of the GDPR compliance requirements, and right. I can't remember what it's called in California. Uh, uh, CCPA, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's hard for a dyslexic person to have so many acronyms. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've we've had multiple guests on both of those, so it finally sort of stuck ah. with me. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. So with either of those, what's happened? Let me close the cloud one real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, I'm positive. I don't think it likes that I am going to stop sharing there. So hang on. Um, we have actually added the ability to do your compliance archives in here because if you go to social media any of your social media accounts that you have have a compliance archive associated with them that you can request and I think it's a great place for people to start looking at digital forensics and putting links together is with their own data because they understand it the most mm -hmm. and I'm sure many of the people who watch uh, your program have LinkedIn accounts I mean right. it's our modern resume yeah Right. So you can go in and request your LinkedIn uh, account archive. So a compliance archive with it. And in the free version, you can bring it in with the social media backup and it will break it down and let you do all the same things you would do in a traditional forensic exam with okay. that archive. Okay. So it's a little kind of a practice round. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, I think I the best it. data to practice with is your own. Okay. Or now, your kids. Are, are there, is there anything about sort of the architecture or structure of some of the, the major sort of social network things that makes it easier or harder, say, to comb the data of a Facebook page versus a Discord page versus an Instagram? So uh, Facebook, uh, well, all the data changes quite a bit. It depends if you're working with cloud data or you're working with data from the devices they might exist on. 91% of the time we check our social media on our smartphones. Yep. So if I were acquiring a smartphone, um, that would be quite different. Um, I could actually show you some of those steps if you'd like, sure. and it will, it will affect the type of data I get. Oddly, the data you get the most of is typically with some of the compliance archives, and it's because with compliance, you're required to represent the full lifespan of the account, where um, a smartphone is only going to represent a portion of that time. So, let's see. So I, I have bravely connected my own phone here. <laughs> we won't finish processing my whole phone. That would no. be crazy. Yeah. Let's Close our see. eyes up there. Requisite times. Yeah. They would be like, oh, don't look here. Don't look here. Right, right. So I'm an Android user. Not okay. probably a super big shock. But um, so I immediately see you within my wizard. I'm hoping you can see that. Uh, not right now. Not right now. See, this is when we have that Zoom moment. Now you there do. It there it is. There's Google user. Android now. Yep. So I can choose to process my Android. I can choose what type of acquisition I'm going to do with my Android. 
Typically, most of them are going to choose a logical acquisition. And in that process, you have choices of whether or not I'm going to unlock the file system. That typically will mean that we're going to root the device as part of the process. I could do a third party routing. So I could do a king root. I could do um, any variety of them. That's actually all built into what the technology does. And then, and this is where it's hard because I'm going to have to go back and forth. You'll hear other beings associated with it. <laughs> um, after Windows goes through and sees the device, then I have to interact with the phone itself, which is where it's actually been difficult in the pandemic is because you still physically have to have access to most of the evidence you deal with in digital forensics. Mm -hmm. Obviously only the cloud is the one that we don't have to physically touch or be um, close right. to and allows me to work with credentials. So I am doing that. I'm hitting OK and authenticating here on the device because I have to in order for it to continue. And in doing it, what you're seeing happen on the screen there is actually an activity timeline associated with my Android. And in dealing with things like social media and even Discord, I'm going to know whether or not down to the second if someone was using those at a particular time. I actually used this functionality when I personally was in a car accident. Hmm. And one of the first questions they ask is, were you on your phone? Oh, yeah. And I was unconscious when I was in the car accident, so I had no idea what was happening. And it drove me crazy as a digital forensic person because I really yeah. wanted to put those pieces together. And I was like, right. what's going on? Um, that's when I used this functionality to say what was happening on my smartphone. And I was able to get it down to the second of what point I had impacted the guardrails. And you see it's got quite a bit of data. We're already at over 17,000. It's going to represent about, usually it's about a month of data on a really active user. On processing my husband's phone, I was able to get three months of data off of his. Hmm. And he was upwards of the 50,000 plus uh, items within his activity. So there's like, there's like a, a, a ceiling of the number of pieces that it'll process? Uh, there's not a ceiling. It's all based on each type of device. So he ha he's okay. also an Android user. I finally converted him off of Apple. It took mm -hmm. forever though. I want to tell you. It yeah. took most of our marriage. So, <laughs> persistence, people. Persistence. It was. It was all about that focus persistence. <laughs> now he's an Android user. All right. Um, but we're still getting quite a bit of that information um, from his new Android, but it's a different one. I'm a big Samsung user and he uses a different type of device. So... As it goes through and processes it, the next thing it's going to do is it's going to pull a backup of the file system and then break down those numerous categories. As soon as I get to apps, that's when we're really going to see, okay, what are they using in coordination with that activity timeline? Hmm. And it's probably going to prompt me here. We'll see. Just one second. These are all those awkward moments that it's like I have to look down while I'm doing that. And it's going to save the data over. But in the end, because um, it will prompt me, hopefully I notice, when I was in the car accident, it showed when I disconnected from Bluetooth because I had an Amazon Alexa Rove device that was actually playing my audiobook. Hmm. And the first thing that happens in a car impact is all the Bluetooth devices will actually disconnect. Okay. And so I was able to get down to that, but right I was also wearing my Fitbit. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm, a, I, I'm pretty religious about wearing my Fitbit. I think it makes us nerds that have desk jobs feel more healthy. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 It recorded how fast I was going. Wow. So there was my second piece. And there's yep. that path that kind of leads you through it. Interesting. Or okay. was I communicating with someone else? I wasn't. I was just listening to an audiobook at the time. Okay. But it changes um, in the case of a vehicle. It changes the way that it gets prosecuted if yes. I was on my phone versus not on my phone. And right. that's part of what we do in digital forensics. So now it's gonna go through and process through the file system and it would keep going. Um, my phone's actually rather large, so it would take forever yeah. um, to process through, but I will cancel this real quick just because sure. I think the activity timeline actually showed you a lot of information and it would yes. show you things linking us back to things like Discord. So just one sec. I'm an impatient clicker too. I'm horrible. 
Yes, I'm sure I want to cancel it. Yes. It's thinking about it. It's going to make me adjust to a different share. Hang on. It's still grabbing while asking you, are you sure? It is. It's like, are you positive? I can keep going. <laughs> it's like, I really want to. Yeah, this is fun. And then I have to, hang on. I have to pull it over. This is when you have the bad side of a threaded tool. Okay. Like, stop. I just don't want you to. Yes, cancel. It's actually because the share is saying, do you want to share that dialogue too? And I'm like, yes. There we go. Yes. I had to share the right one. I had aborted all the rest. And we're going to go back over here. My case is going to update in just a minute. Because it's just dropping that 22,000 pieces of data in there. And I'm going to have it. Let's see. This is when you like, okay, finish thinking. Right. Um, hang on. That's why. I had to hit finish on the third screen. Okay. Now it's adding it. And anyone who's ever done a lot of Zoom things, they know how many screens you have to go to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There we go. Yes. And there's your Samsung. Oh, yeah. There you go. There we go. Our user activity timeline. It was 24,000 different things. Hang on. You're probably going to hear my fan. <laughs> yep. A, yeah, no way to avoid it. I hear a snuffling doggo and I hear a fan. Yep. yep, you hear that would be one of my Dotsons that I can't seem to get out of my room. This is part of COVID. <laughs> they go yeah. to work with me. Oh, absolutely. So you see access to that. The seizure services is my services. Um, you can see whatever happened in between there. Okay. Going to the system. But the best part of it, and this is where it's the fun forensic side that people have to look for is expand it just so it's the move to foreground and move to background okay. that tells me whether or not a person did it or the machine did hmm. which is the funnest side of digital forensics it's always the most difficult part is putting a person behind that keyboard hmm. so okay so the move to background is that that means that that you've manually moved this or that yeah so this is is it me or is it the machine so move to background <laughs> move to foreground, um, those are actually all of those. And none is just, a lot of this is the system running in the background. Got You'd it. be surprised how often it is the system doing work on it. Right. I'm trying to see, I looked up a contact um, earlier. I had moved to background, that was me uh, working on that contact, accessing the media store. And I do apologize, my dog is coughing in the background. And the other one is talking. They're yeah. like, what is happening? They so. are loving all the humans at home right now. They really are. That's yeah. probably their favorite part. They're yep. like, this is a lot of access. They're going to be so confused in about a year when everyone's they're... back away again all day. Yes. That they're like, what happened? Why, why did they yeah, all go? It, it used to be so good. <laughs> yes. But it is interesting to see, and it really lets you kind of break down what the system is. But people who are looking at the field, if they like this, this is the best part of it is it's finding those miscellaneous pieces and you're, and again, they're down to the seconds. This is every second of when I was using the device, there are dead zones, you know, if I was in that uh, calling to Dex, et cetera, go to connect was doing that. Things like that. So it is an exciting field with lots of good data. Um, yeah. I realize Discord was a really short part of this, but if you're exploring the field of digital forensics, this is part of that fun, is putting those disparate pieces of data together to find one big picture. Yeah, and so, and again, you know, we, in, in our archives, we have, you know, Amber walking through the, you know, the main E3 platform a couple of years back, but this is like a, a good sort of uh, bonus to that because, you know, obviously there's, there's a lot of sort of things you know about computer forensics, but something like this gives you sort of the, uh, the, the back roads or the sort of unlikely, you know, cul-de-sacs where you might, might need to do your research. There you go. I like yeah. that. The unlikely cul-de-sacs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like a, just like a, a, a mystery. Yep. No, gotta absolutely. Go, gotta go search for clues out in the, uh, 
out, out, out in the fields there. So, okay. So is, is there anything else you want to show here? Or? No, I think, I think that gives you kind of a nice little sampling of some of the unique data sources. Some of yeah. the things we're adding in the future is uh, you'll see Slack in our next version. Okay. Um, because again, lots of people spend a lot of time in Slack now too. Yeah. So um, we think that those are valuable pieces of data. We can also image machines mm -hmm. remotely, different things like that. Um, a lot of those videos for individual functions that people want to learn about, we put them on our mm -hmm. YouTube channel. Okay. So some of this stuff you can, you can sort of practice on a little bit in like a free version yeah. or something. Yeah, okay. We have a trial version and then the free version, the free version has limited functionality. So you can do your compliance archives with social media. You can do Facebook cloud. Um, but the trial version that we offer to everybody, you can do everything in the tool, every capability you have. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I was going to say, so what's, what are, what happens you jump to premium then and what, 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 what unlocks? Um, everything. Have so <laughs> yes, all of this, uh, and you probably, again, with the, I can see it. Um, I can see it. Oh, yeah. yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, all of the ad evidence capabilities, all the mobile yep. for the acquisition capabilities, all of those become functional in the full trial. And it's easy. They just have to email trial at paraben.com and okay. they can actually sign up. Can you sort of um, give us kind of a, 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 an idea or a sort of a walkthrough of, if, you know, if you're, you're using the free serve, you know, like what, what are some tips for sort of like getting to know it? Like what would you, what would the, if you had the free one, what would, what's the first thing you would do with it? If I had the free one, I would have to, um, I'd actually watch the YouTube channels that are the walkthrough on it. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um, even with the trials, yeah. the trials that we have three different data sets that you can walk through, which is a great way to learn. Um, okay. I actually shot the YouTube video myself where I said, okay, if I were looking at Android, these are the first three steps I would do. If I were looking at iOS, I'd do this. And if I were looking at um, a computer image, I would do this. And then we provide you each one of the images so you can actually process them while we go. Okay. It's, I think that's really a great way for people to really get introduced when they're switching careers or they're just starting out. Yeah. Yeah. You heard, you heard it here first. Go, go try the free version, play around with it. Yep. Watch the YouTube videos, watch Amber's uh, walkthrough and, and see for yourself. Yep. All right. Um, all right. Well then uh, thank you again for this, uh, this walkthrough, Amber. This was, uh, this was lots of fun. Wonderful. I hope uh, everyone gets a chance to try it out. It's a great field to look for new opportunities in. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we, we've got a whole lot more of a sense of like what it's like out there. And so I really appreciate that. Excellent. Thanks so much. And uh, once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, you can find many more of them on our YouTube page. Just go to youtube.com and type in cyberwork with InfoSec to check out our collection of tutorials, interviews, and past webinars. And as I said, uh, Amber's previous walkthrough of the E3 platform is still up there. So please check that out too. Uh, if you'd rather have us in your ears during your workday, all of our videos, uh, except for this one, are also available as audio podcasts. Just search cyberwork with InfoSec in your podcast catcher of choice. Uh, and as mentioned at the top of the show, we want to hear from you about what you'd like to see more of on this show. If you could please go to www2, that's www and the numeral 2infosecinstitutecom slash survey, uh, you'll find a short set of questions about your listening habits and interests and what you like about the show or don't. Uh, if you take the survey, you will be eligible to win a $100 Amazon gift card. So that's www.infosecinstitute.com slash survey. Thank you once again to Amber Schroeder and thank you all for watching and listening. We will speak to you next week.